Welcome back to Cinemation Movie Recaps. Today, I will show you the movie The Last Samurai from 2003. Beware of spoilers. The film begins with a man named Moritsuhu Katsumoto sitting in the grass and meditating. In a vision, he sees a white tiger defending itself against numerous samurai in a misty forest. At this point, he is unaware of the meaning of the vision. In San Francisco, California, Mr. McCabe introduces Nathan Algren to the tourist as an American hero, but behind the curtain Nathan Algren is a drunken and lousy-looking man. Algren is coerced into his appearance by Mr. McCabe so that he can sell guns, but the drunken Algren frightens the audience with unexpected gunfire and vivid descriptions of the horrors of war, as well as a loud prayer for those who have died in the name of mechanical amusements and commercial opportunities. McCabe dismisses Algren as a result of this performance. One of the bystanders is Algren's comrade, Sergeant Zebulon Grant. He offers Algren a job. When Algren asked what kind of work, Grant said it was a job that suited him, a man's job. Grant took Algren to a restaurant where he finds himself with his old superior, Colonel Howard Bagley, who in turn introduces Algren to Mr. Amura, a businessman from Japan. Mr. Amura is willing to pay any price for the training of the Japanese army, thus making Japan a civilized country. If an agreement is reached, the Japanese emperor will grant the United States the exclusive right to supply arms, but then Algren states that he has already made an agreement with the Winchester Company. Mr. Omura, however, says that Algren will receive only $25 per week, while he is offering $400 per month. Algren asks for $500 a month for himself and his comrade Grant, and another $500 when the job is done. Grant asks who the Japanese army will be fighting, to which Mr. Amura replies that it is Katsumoto Moritsugo. Mr. Amura explains that Katsumoto was once the emperor's teacher, a samurai, and now a rebel against the emperor. Mr. Amura intends to use the army to suppress the samurai-led rebellion. Bagley boasts that Mr. Amura has read Algren's book. He also praises Algren's book because his study of the tribes, in his opinion, was instrumental in defeating the Cheyenne. Algren, who was traumatized by memories of the war, begins to laugh sarcastically and says that reuniting with the colonel was so inspiring, then excuses himself from the dinner table. Bagley, feeling guilty for triggering Algren's traumatic memories, follows him and explains that he was only doing what he was told to do, and tries to convince Algren to accept the job offer. Algren counters to Bagley that he would kill anyone for pay, but would gladly kill him for free. Algren reluctantly accepts the job anyway. The film continues and Algren is on his way to Japan. He said he was confronted with the truth of his current situation, that he was hired to help suppress another tribal leader's rebellion which he says is the only job he is suited for. He says he is haunted by the irony of his life. Once in Japan, Algren meets Simon Graham, a British photographer, scientist, linguist, and interpreter. He has been hired to serve as an interpreter for Nathan Algren, who is now training the Imperial Japanese Army. Graham tells Algren that the Emperor is fascinated by everything Western, while the samurai believe things are changing too fast. He introduces Algren and Bagley to the young Emperor Meiji. During their meeting, the Emperor asks Algren a childlike question. Is it true that American Indians wear eagle feathers and paint their faces before they go into battle, and that they are not afraid? Algren answers simply, they are very brave. Algren, with the help of a translator, he and Grant begin training the Imperial Japanese Army. Algren learns that the Imperial soldiers are forcibly recruited peasants who know nothing about firearms or combat, and many of whom have never seen a gun. They are led by General Hisgawa, who is a man of unimpressive stature, but commands great respect. Algren asks General Hisgawa for information about Katsumoto. Algren also has Graham translate several Japanese books so that he can better understand the samurai and their tactics. He is amazed to find that Katsumoto has neglected to equip his men with firearms, preferring to fight traditionally. Graham mentions in one of their conversations that Katsumoto pawned his sword to defend the emperor. This throws Algren into a flashback to the past. 
In this flashback, he tries to stop Bagley from carrying out one of their raids on an American Indian tribe because there are so many children there. But Bagley did not listen to him and ruthlessly shot the Indians, including the children. A little later, Algren is told that he must prepare the army because the samurai are attacking one of Amura's railroad lines. Algren protests, claiming that the army is not ready. Bagley, however, orders him to move out at 6 a.m. the next day. The battle was a disaster. The undisciplined soldiers were wiped out and Grant is killed. Algren tries to avenge him by fending off several samurai with a tiger banner. He stabs a splintered spear into the neck of one samurai. Before a samurai can kill him, Katsumoto remembers his vision and stops the fight. Algren is taken to a village deep in the mountains. Katsumoto, who also speaks English, asks for Algren's name, but he refuses to answer. Algren's wounds are tended by Taka, Katsumoto's sister and widow of the samurai whom Algren had killed. Yuija wants to kill Algren, but Nabutada, Katsumoto's son, does not agree. In the beginning, Algren is treated badly by the villagers. As the days go by, Algren overcomes his alcoholism and guilt and learns the Japanese language and culture. One day, he is called to the temple by Katsumoto. They talk about Japanese customs and about his enemy. That day, Algren also learns that the red samurai he killed in the first battle is Taka's husband. Algren wanders through the village and begins to develop sympathy for the samurai and the villagers. He is even invited to a family dinner by Nabutada, who has come to like him. Algren visits Katsumoto again at the temple. Katsumoto tells Algren that Yuijo will teach him the art of the Japanese sword. As the days pass, Algren learns to admire the villagers. In his diary, he expresses amazement at how the villagers strive for perfection from the moment they wake up, no matter what they do, and he notes that he has never seen such discipline. He also learns that samurai means to serve, and that Katsumoto believes his rebellion is in service to the emperor. With Yujio, he practices his swordsmanship. He also begins to learn Japanese from Taka's friendly children. He grows closer to Taka and eventually apologizes for killing her husband. One night, a group of ninjas infiltrate the village during a performance. Algren helps Katsumoto fight off the ninjas and eventually saves Katsumoto himself and one of Taka's children. The next morning, Katsumoto meets with Algren in the Garden of Blossom. Algren asks if it was Amura or the Emperor who attacked the village. Katsumoto replied, if it is the Emperor who wants me dead, he need only ask. Before they part ways now, Katsumoto gives Algren back his things and says that the Emperor has granted a safe journey to Tokyo. It is not easy for Algren and Taka to say goodbye together with their children. Katsumoto and his entourage accompany Algren to Tokyo. Many citizens bow their heads out of respect for the samurai. Algren sees that the Imperial Japanese Army has grown into a modern fighting force, utilizing a new westernized artillery. Bagley boasts that the Japanese will soon be able to keep their Western weapons if they agree to the treaty proposed by the Americans. Meanwhile, Emperor Meiji and Katsumoto meet. To his horror, Katsumoto discovers that the young and inexperienced Emperor has basically become a puppet of Amura. Katsumoto asks the Emperor to find wisdom for his people. Meanwhile, Amura asks Algren how many samurai there are but Algren refuses to give any information. Amura said that Algren could either stop Katsumoto during the council meeting or lead the Imperial Army. Algren replies that his mission is to train the army, not lead it. In the market, Algren sees a group of soldiers taunting Nabutada. He tries to stop them, but one soldier grabs him and even cuts Nabutada's hair. At a government meeting, Amura orders the arrest of Katsumoto for carrying a sword in public. Katsumoto says that only the Emperor can order this, but the Emperor remains silent. Meanwhile, Algren, who was familiar with Japanese customs, knows that Katsumoto is preparing to commit seppuku, so he went with Graham and other samurai to Katsumoto, who is heavily guarded, to rescue him and dissuade him from killing himself. Graham, acting as interpreter and photographer, introduces Algren as the President of the United States. Katsumoto was surprised to see Algren, 
thinking he was already back in America. But Algren tries to persuade Katsumoto to escape. Yujio entered the room after killing the guards outside and hands them their katanas. Katsumoto invites Graham to take pictures of his village. The fleeing samurai are supported by more of Katsumoto's followers, who kill several guards with bows and arrows. Nabutada, however, is mortally wounded by archers in the process. Algren tries to save him, but Nabutada says he wants to stay and use his last breath to protect them so the rest of the samurai can escape. Katsumoto knows that the Imperial Army would soon come to seize him and the rest of the samurai. He feels that he has failed his ancestors and the other samurai. But Algren says, together, we will make the Emperor hear our words. The eldest son of Taka is worried about Algren. He asks if Algren will also fight the Whites, and Algren replies, yes, if they come to them. When asked why Algren replies, because they are coming to destroy what I have come to love. Katsumoto and Algren prepare their 500 men for battle. Algren says that they would take advantage of the arrogance of the Imperial Army to trap them and deprive them of artillery support. On May 25, 1877, Algren made his last diary entry. Taka dresses Algren in a samurai outfit. She says Algren will do the honor if he wears it. Katsumoto gives Algren a special katana engraved with the words, I am among the warriors for whom the old ways have joined the new. On the battlefield, Bagley was surprised to see Algren on the side of the samurai and urges Katsumoto to surrender. The Imperial Army attacked, first with their modern weapons, while the samurai waited for Katsumoto and Algren's command. The battle claims heavy casualties on both sides. However, due to Algren's superior tactics, the Imperial soldiers get scared and start to retreat. Algren knows that the Imperial Army will soon send more regiments and that the samurai will not be able to stop them. Katsumoto tells Algren that he does not need to die there. Algren replies that it is not over yet. The two men and the remaining samurai ride their horses to a suicidal cavalry charge. During the charge, Yujio dies and badly shoots Katsumoto. But in his second attempt to shoot Katsumoto, Algren hurls his katana into Bagley's chest, causing his death. The samurai are quickly cut down by gatling guns. Katsumoto is shot several times. The Imperial Captain Algren trained was horrified by what he saw and ordered them to cease fire, which Amura refuses. The mortally wounded Katsumoto commits seppuku with Algren's help, saying he will miss their conversations, while all the Imperial soldiers kneel before Katsumoto. Days later, at the Emperor's Palace, the Americans are about to finalize the trade agreements with Amuro when Algren arrives limping with Katsumoto's katana. Emperor Meiji was shocked to learn that Algren is still alive. Algren presents the Emperor with Katsumoto's sword and mentions Katsumoto's last wish. Algren says that Katsumoto wants the Emperor to remember the ancestors who carried the sword and what they died for. The Emperor asks Algren if he was with Katsumoto to the end, and Algren replies yes. Amura insists that Algren is an enemy of the Emperor. Algren then says to the Emperor, if you believe that I am your enemy, then command me and I will gladly take my life, the same words that Katsumoto had said to him. The Emperor then replies that while he had dreamed of a united, strong, and independent Japan, the Japanese people must not forget who they are and where they come from. The Emperor then turns to the Americans and says that the negotiations are not in the interest of his people, and that the treaty is null and void. Amura protests, but the Emperor threatens to confiscate his family's assets and distribute them to the people. Amura leaves the room. The Emperor asks how Katsumoto died, but Algren replies, I will tell you how he lived. Graham writes in his book, no one knows anything about the American Captain Algren. Some say he died of his wound, others that he returned to America, but for him. Algren finally found a small measure of peace that we all seek but few of us ever find. Toward the end of the film, Algren is shown returning to Katsumoto's village while Taka and the other villagers prepare the land for planting. Taka sees Algren and they smile at each other.